Hello, my name is Shane Sims. I'm a master's student at the University of British Columbia. Today I'm presenting my paper titled A Neural Architecture for Detecting User Confusion in Eye Tracking Data. Recently, there's been a lot of interest in the idea of AI agents that can predict user needs, states, and abilities, and then personalize the interaction accordingly. In particular, eye tracking data has been used to predict a variety of um, states, such as mind wandering, boredom, curiosity, difficulty reading, and user confusion. This last one is the subject of this paper. In particular, we build on the results of um, Lale from Ishkai 2016, where they predicted confusion from eye tracking data uh, using classical machine learning methods. What we do in this paper is show that by using deep learning methods, we can create uh, state-of-the-art results over the same data set. Uh, so before talking about our method, I'm just going to briefly cover the data set used. So this data set is composed of user interactions with the value chart, which is an interactive visualization-based tool for supporting preferential choice. In this case, uh, selecting the best home from amongst 10 choices in terms of the cost, location, space, and amenities. Uh, the data set was collected um, with a Toby T120 eye tracker. And in particular, 136 users performed five tasks like the, like the one just provided, repeated, repeated eight times each. And in the end, there was 112 uh, tasks that had reports of confusion, and there were 5,000 that didn't. However, in the 60% 60, 60 of the users reported confusion at least once, which tells us this is still a state worth um, addressing. The labels for this data set were collected by a, a self-report, that is the user clicked a button, like the one we see in the top right hand corner, labeled I am confused, which was then confirmed to be a true instance of confusion with the study administrators later on. The Toby T120 collects a sample every eight milliseconds, which includes a measure for the head distance, the gaze, and the pupil size. And what we, what we get over this is a matrix um, where each row represents a sample separated by eight milliseconds, and the columns are the gaze, pupil, and head distance for each eye. With an average length of 13.7 seconds and a sampling rate of 120 hertz, this resulted in samples with over 1,600 rows on average. The last second of all of these examples were removed in order to prevent the users clicking the I am confused button from being used by the model uh, to predict confusion in the data set. What the previous method by Lale did was process these raw sequences uh, into feature vectors of 161 summary statistics, which were then, predict or which were then processed by a random forest classifier um, to predict either confused or not confused. What we did first was to use these raw sequences directly um, as input to a recurrent neural network, in particular the gated recurrent unit variant of the recurrent neural network, which is a neural network specifically for processing sequential data like eye tracking data. However, a couple of problems with this were the length of the data, uh, of the data items and the small size of the data set, um, typically not a good thing for a deep learning method. So we address both of these concerns by what we're calling a cyclical split, which is simply downsampling, except that we don't discard the downsampled rows and instead use those rows for additional um, data points. And so what this looks like pictorially is a raw sequence on the left being split into four. And so the first row of the raw sequence and every fourth row thereafter goes to the first item, the second row and every fourth row thereafter goes to the second item and so on and so forth. Uh, doing the cyclical split reduces the, or divides the length by four. And we also limit the uh, interaction to the, to the final five seconds, which gives us sequences of a maximum of 150 steps, which is much more in line with what the RNNs are used for uh, typically. So uh, processing this with the RNN, uh, we measure performance by looking at sensitivity, specificity, and then uh, combined. Uh, sensitivity is the confused class accuracy, specificity, is the not confused class accuracy and combined is the average of the two. And what we saw here is that while we didn't see an increase in specificity, we saw a jump from 53 to 75 in terms of sensitivity, uh, which when evaluated was a statistically different or statistically significant difference. And for this result and all the results hereafter, uh, they were collected by 10 iterations of tenfold cross validation across users, which ensures that no user is present in both the training and test sets. However, another way that sequential or a raw eye tracking sample can be represented is as, a, is as a scan path. In this case, it's only the gaze portion that's represented, but this is represented pictorially 
um, as the gaze coordinates uh, as they're processed throughout the course of the interaction. Uh, so the second thing we did is we used these scan paths and processed them through a simple two-layer uh, CNN. And what we found was that the, this resulted in a similar increase as that achieved by the RNN, um, and both of which were, were uh, significant improvements over the random forest classifier. So given these two methods now, um, the RNN to, to process the sequence uh, numerically and the CNN to process the gaze sequence uh, pictorially, we then combine them into a single model called the Visual Spatial Temporal Network, BTNet for short. What this does is it has the GRU processing the raw sequence, the CNN processing the picture scan path, and we take the hidden state of the GRU, which is a 256 element vector, and the output of the um, last convolutional layer uh, into a 50 element vector. We concatenate these and then process them through a simple two layer neural network in order to classify the examples confused or not confused. This is then trained as, an, as a single unit. And we found that this gave us our best results overall. So we went from a 0.75 um, sensitivity with the GRU, 0.73 with the CNN, up to a 0.79 with the VTNet. Another interesting fact was this is the first time we saw an increase in specificity, which is again, the ability to predict a not confused item, which went from 0.8 in all previous instances to 0.84 in this case. So this concludes uh, our main results. And moving on to some elements of future work, um, the first thing we, we wanted to look at was how our model is doing so well. So obviously, uh, it, it's doing well despite our small data set. That means to, this tells us that there is a strong predictor of confusion within these data items. What we want to find out is exactly what this, uh, what this is that's allowing such good results to be um, obtained. The other thing we're looking at is how to increase confusion predicted, prediction accuracy by using um, tweaks to our architecture, such as dilated convolutions in the CNN. And finally, we're looking at what other cues and states should be considered uh, so we have ongoing work where we're using BTNet to predict early stage Alzheimer's, as well as cognitive abilities such as visual literacy. Uh, this concludes our results. Thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions, please email me. Thank you.